What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna take a look at this brand new 2021 Audi RS5 Coupe. Huge shout out and thank you to Hendrick Audi of Northlake for providing this car for today's video. Definitely check out the links to their website in the description below. They have a huge selection of the 2021 Audi lineup, so definitely check them out. And the model that we're looking at today is finished off in Nardo Gray, has the dynamic package as well as the black optic carbon package, and has an MSRP at $91,800. Underneath the hood, this utilizes a 2.9 liter twin turbocharged six cylinder engine. This cranks out 444 horsepower and 442 pound feet of torque. The engine is paired to an eight speed automatic transmission and sends the power to all four wheels through the Quattro all wheel drive system. And with a curb weight just under 4,000 pounds, you're looking at zero to 60 in 3.7 seconds and 174 miles per hour top speed. And then running off a 15.3 gallon fuel tank, you can expect 18 miles per gallon in the city with 25 out on the highway. The overall length is 186 inches with a wheelbase at 108.9. The height is 54 inches with a width at 73.5 inches. And then being an RS model, we give ventilated and drilled rotors in all four corners, measuring 14.8 inches up front with a six piston brake caliper, and we get 13 inch rotors in the back with floating calipers. Taking a look at the front end of the 2021 Audi RS5 Coupe. This features matrix design LED headlights with Audi laser light. They have a really sharp design to them and you can see the LED daytime running lights. There's a lot of sharp contours on the inside and a gloss black trim piece on the farthest side. And then we get a gloss black grille up front with blacked out RS5 and Audi logos. There's a forward facing camera and then six parking sensors within the front bumper. You can also see more gloss black trim on the farthest sides within this mesh. And they feature part of the safety sensors. There's carbon fiber trim on these side pieces as well to give it that sporty design. And you can see the front splitter protruding forward with more carbon fiber. The front end is extremely aggressive with all the sharp body lines and it flows really seamless to the hood with four prominent body lines that lead its way all the way to the windshield. The hood spans the entire width of the car to really give the RS5 that wider appearance and it flows to the front fenders very well to continue this design. And then moving to the side profile you can see how the body line of the hood actually flows right into a sharp line in the side profile of the RS5. It goes all the way through the doors and into the rear fender arches and you can see how it really gives the rear end that wider appearance. There's also more body molding in the lower portion of these doors and another carbon fiber trim piece in the lower section. You can see a blacked out RS5 logo in the front fenders. And then you can see these two-tone 20-inch wheels finish off in machine silver and gloss black. They have a very aggressive design and look great against the body color. And they're wrapped in a Continental Sport Contact 6 tire. The RS5 also features body color door handles and carbon fiber mirror caps with an integrated LED turn signal. There's also blacked out trim around the windows. And then you can see part of the sunroof up top with the glass. And the whole side profile flows together very well to give the RS5 a proportional look. And then making our way to the rear end, you can see the third brake light integrated into the upper portion of this rear window. There's also a carbon fiber lip spoiler on the trunk, and then you can see the Audi logo blacked out as well as the RS5 logo. You get the standard backup camera right in the center, and then six more parking sensors within the rear bumper. The LED taillights have a fantastic look with a lot of sharp contours, and they even have that matching trim piece that we saw up front. And then moving to the lower portion, you can see more carbon fiber within the rear diffuser trimmed with some gloss black black accents and then finishing it up we have the dual exhaust finished off with black tips. So there's a good look at the exterior of the 2021 Audi RS5 finished in probably my favorite color Nardo Gray. This is a great looking car and I love the carbon fiber accents. Comment below what do you guys think of Nardo Gray. So we now have Audi's key fob. If I go ahead and lock the car I can just leave the key fob right in my pocket and all I have to do is grab the door handle and we can check out the interior. This particular spec has a black leather interior. You're also gonna see some silver accents and carbon fiber all around. If we go ahead and take a look at the door panel now, it's finished off in black. You can see Alcantara on the entire inside and we get smooth black leather with contrast stitching. We have both your window controls and all the mirror controls and then your grab handle above that. More of the carbon fiber trim, your aluminum release handle, lock and unlock as well as the memory seating. Then we have your trunk button as well with some storage and then part of the Bang & Audio system. 
And then as we move our way inside, you can see RS5 on the aluminum door still, and then all the power controls on the left side of these seats. They're finished off in beautiful smooth black leather. You can see the contrast stitching and these really large bottom bolsters. And then in the front portion of the seat, you can grab this lever and pull this leg rest out for added comfort. And then we have this awesome design for all the contrast stitching, really cool diamond pattern on the insides. It looks fantastic going all the way up the backs of these seats. You can see more of the stitching. They are single piece backs that have a really sporty design and the release lever on the back with a button as well and then more stitching and an embossed RS logo. And then spinning around to the steering wheel, it's wrapped in perforated black leather with aluminum accents. And then now inside the RS5, if I keep my foot on the brake, we can go ahead and fire it up. Engine roars to life, and when you do start it up, you have a little piece that comes out to give you the seatbelt, which is a really cool feature. The Audi RS5 features this full LCD display for the gauge cluster. You can see in this mode right now, we have a really large tack, your gear, as well as the speedometer. And then you have power and torque over on the right with a G meter on the left. And if I scroll using this button right here, I can scroll down to see a few different things like tire pressure. And then if I tap the view icon, the gauges completely change a little bit. You can see how everything is set up right now. You have that same G meter and tire pressure right in the center with your fuel level and tack on the left. If I use these left and right icons now, I can scroll over. You can see information with your audio system that pops up as well as your phone. And then going into the navigation, you get the full view navigation, which looks fantastic for these Audis. And then tapping the view again, it goes back to the normal mode with the navigation in a smaller spot on the corner. If we take a look at the steering wheel now, we have all those controls on the left side. Then some controls over on the right for Bluetooth and audio and heated steering wheel. Then if I tap the RS mode button, it goes back to this menu and puts the car into the sport mode. You can see RS1 on the screen and RS2. Those are preset for the performance modes for the car. And then going back into the comfort, we have steering wheel mounted paddle shifters that have a really good look and your turn signal stock on the left with your wiper blades over on the right and then cruise controls over on this left side. To the left of the steering wheel now, you can see more of the carbon fiber and all the headlight controls. There's one of the air vents and then nice black over all the dashboard. And then as you make your way to the right side, you can even see how these air vents go all the way to one side. More carbon fiber and the Quattro logo has a really cool look. And then moving to the center now, we have a full touchscreen display for the infotainment. You can see all the different icons right here. You can scroll left and right to see more items. And then going all the way over, you have a configurable screen right now with information for radio, telephone, and nav, and you can configure all of that. You can tap these icons on the left to go under the Sirius. You have more audio controls. Your phone icon can pop up, and then you can tap the navigation icon. You can see how HD everything is. And then back into the home screen, if I scroll over a little bit and go under view, vehicle. You can actually monitor a lot of the different things. You can go into your drive select, go through all your different driving modes, and then customize the RS1 and RS2. And then putting the car into reverse now, you just push the button, push it all the way forward. Your backup camera comes up on the left with a top down over on the right side. If I tap this icon as well, it comes up with all the different views. Tapping this one right here, you can see your rear wheels and then your front wheels. You can even see how they are turned. You have a rear view, a center rear view, and then tapping this one, you have the top down and then all of your parking sensors. So I really like how all the different cameras pop up. The front view is up right now. Then we can exit out of that screen and put us back into park. Below the actual screen now, you can see two more air vents and then more of the carbon fiber trims. Then we have all of your climate control settings with your heated seat buttons. You can see how we have the LCD screen for the temperature and this is dual zone climate. You have more toggles in the center and just by touching them, the menus expand a little bit to tell you more information. So I really like how everything is laid out, can easily adjust everything. And then below the climate controls, we have a few more icons. We have your drive select mode like you saw on the screen. Just tapping this, it comes up on the screen as well and it'll tell you in the center. You can hear the exhaust open up a little bit in dynamic mode. We have traction control and then parking sensors and the parking assist with a screen on and off button. And then down below, we have a little bit of storage with a USB and 12 volt, two cup holders and more storage. And then more of this awesome looking carbon fiber volume on off is over on the right side. Then we get more perforated leather around the shifter and an electronic parking brake. Behind all that, we have nice black leather for the armrest and this will slide forwards and back to give you extra comfort. Opening this up, we have the wireless charging and then a little bit of storage and a USB. 
Then if we go over to the right side now, we can open up the glove box. You have a ton of space in here, as you can see, really nice and roomy for a coupe. And then one last look at the overall interior. I think Audi did a great job with all the leather and carbon fiber. Everything is laid out really nicely, extremely sporty looking, especially with the seats. And then all the stitching looks amazing. And then moving to the ceiling now, you can see the sunshade for the sunroof. Then we have your dome lights up top with all the controls. The Audi RS5 also has back seats, so if I go ahead and pull this leather strap forward, it gets the seat out of the way, and then by just pressing this button right here, you can see it automatically sliding forward. Just one touch, it'll automatically do that. You have a really good area to enter the rear now, and you can see all the same stitching and leather transfers its way to the back seats, which has a great look. You have a little bit of storage in the center, then we even do get some climate controls and air vents in front of that. So hopping into the back seat now of the Audi RS5, I can go ahead and pull this seat forward and then by just pressing the button, it's going to automatically go back and then I can manually adjust it where I'd like it. So sitting back here now, you actually do have some good room. I have about an inch above my head for headroom, not too bad. And then a little bit of armrest space over on the left side and the seat is fitting in a really good position right here. You can see we have a really large window and then a lot of glass behind you as well to make it a little bit more roomy feeling. And then right in the center here, I can pull this handle and then open this up. We have a good armrest. We also have a little bit of storage underneath that and then two different cup holders that'll rotate forward. And then even from the back, I can just pull this leather strap and get the seat out of the way. And then by one touch of that same button, it's gonna automatically get out of my way. And then to take a look at the trunk space, you can double tap the button on the key fob, use the one in the interior, or there is one underneath the Audi logo. We have a lot of space in here, as you can see, especially for a two-doored coupe. It's very squared off, so you can fit a lot of luggage and then different things for storage. You also have some tie-down hooks. And then up top now, you do have two different manual levers. You can actually pull this icon and then pull the other one if you'd like. We can separately pull down the center seat, and then the larger buttons actually fold down the second row. And then with the seats folded down now, you can see just how much more space we have in the back of the Audi RS5. And then taking a look from this view, you can see how the seats fold down nice and flat. We have a massive opening to the trunk, so this really is a practical coupe. All right, guys, so we are setting off now in the 2021 Audi RS5 coupe. Comment below, what do you guys think of the Nardo Gray? This is definitely my favorite Audi color. This car is a sweet spec with all the carbon fiber and everything. But getting my bearings now, just driving in the car, this is really comfortable. We're in the comfort mode, so everything is toned down, automatic, everything like that. These seats fit me so well. The bolsters seem to do a good job for lateral support, and then they're just really comfortable to sit in, and I especially love the leg rest and everything. You have a ton of different configurations to really get this in a good position, and I'm really comfortable just driving in the car. Visibility is pretty good as well. You have a really nice windshield. Windows are huge on the left and right, and then the mirrors all do a really good job to see what's going on behind you. Looking over my left and right shoulder, really good view as well, so nothing wrong with that. And then as we're just cruising around 50 miles an hour right now, this is a quiet and comfortable car. Even being the hardcore RS5 model, it's still nice and tame when you're in the normal mode, which I think is a really good touch to make this just a really good daily driver. And then using the interior as you are driving, it's really simple to use. I like how HD all the displays are, so there's nothing distracting or anything like that. And you have a lot of big icons on the screen, so it's really easy to read. There's nothing confusing. And I think it's just laid out very clean to be simple to use. And then as far as just normal driving right now in the comfort mode, the suspension seems to be doing a really good job as well, absorbing all the bumps nicely. So with that said though, we are in the RS5, so of course we're gonna tone it up just a little bit. So I can bump this over into the manual mode and then shift by myself and then tap these icons right here if I'd like, or I can just tap the RS mode and put us into the RS2 or RS1, and that kind of puts you into a preset performance mode. Everything stiffens up a little bit, steering wheel's a little bit heavier, and we'll get to feel it out a little bit on some back roads. So in this mode now, we're gonna be shifting manually. You can already hear a much louder tone for the exhaust, it has a little bit of girdles and pops, and that suspension is already so much stiffer, just hitting a lot of those bumps right now. You can feel how the whole car tightens up a little bit. The shifts so far are super responsive, we're not really touching the gas just yet, but you can already tell how in the RS modes, you know, everything into the dynamic setting, the whole car is completely different. Every little bump I'm completely feeling, that is crazy feeling. And then just tapping this out into comfort mode, like we know, the whole car just toned down and it's a completely different car. That's a really cool way that Audi makes this car just do two things at once. And then you can even just tap the Audi select here and figure everything. So just keeping into the dynamic mode now, <laughs> it sounds so good already. So then in third gear, we'll give it a little bit of gas and feel it out. Wow. 
that sounds really good when you let off the gas and that's got some power just barely giving it gas and taking a nice sharp turn on the car is nice and flat feeling <laughs> i love how responsive everything feels the whole car went from a luxury gt coupe to now a performance oriented sports car and then taking a long sweeping turn going around 50 miles an hour like you would expect the car is nice and composed feeling and the steering you barely have to give it any input and the car is doing exactly what you want you have some bumps in the road going up and down it's crazy how different the car is already feeling every single bump i'm completely feeling like i'm in an r8 or something way more performance oriented <laughs> i love the turbo engine just that down low power Just keeping it even under 4,000 RPM, the whole car just really moves. All right, so slowing down now, we're gonna test out a three-point turn because we have the Quattro all-wheel drive. We'll see what kind of turning radius we have in the car. And then of course, using all the backup cameras. So just doing a full lock and then going into reverse. I love the cameras on this car, especially the top down. You can really see everything. And I can tell before my wheels get off the pavement. And it looks like we're actually gonna make it, which is nice. In a car like this, it's nice to have that type of maneuverability. And then we'll put it back into the manual and then go back into the RS modes. And then getting back up to speed, giving it a little bit of gas. <laughs> and I like how it even kicks you in the back a little bit on every gear change. It just adds that character to the car. And then you hear those little rumbles in the exhaust. That is definitely a nice touch for an RS model. And then wrapping it up back on the little fun road. Man, I like the blend with this car. The fact that the rear seats are usable and the trunk space is pretty large. It's a car that can kind of do everything you need. You can put people in the back and actually use it. But then when you're on a back country road or something like this in the mountains even, you can actually drive this car <laughs> and have a fun time in a performance RS model from Audi. So it's definitely a really cool car that has a lot to offer. But I think that's it then for today's video. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and definitely check out Audi North Lake. Huge shout out and thank you to them for providing this RS5 for today's video. They have a really large selection of all the 2021 Audi, so definitely check them out. But if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. I'll see you guys next video.